Hi, my name is Greg Durrett. I teach computer science at the University of Texas at Austin. I'm going to tell you about the field of natural language processing. And this is a field about solving problems dealing with human language data. And one of the biggest advances we've seen in the last decade in this field is ChatGPT. This launched in November 2022 and immediately made a big splash. It was followed up by GPT-4, which came out in March 2023, which led to headlines like, OpenAI announces GPT-4 claims it can beat 90% of humans on the SAT. So they claim that it got a 1410. We're going to look at whether that we should be impressed by that or not. Uh, but regardless, it's clear that these systems are capable of doing some pretty cool stuff. And they also were able to do well on law school exams, the bar exam, medical exams, things like that. So in order to understand why this is so exciting, we need to take a little bit of a step back. Where was the state of technology around language processing a few years ago? Well, five years ago, uh, an example of a kind of tool that worked pretty well was Google Translate. You could put in a sentence in some language and ask for a translation into some other language, and it wouldn't always be perfect, but it would give you something pretty reasonable. Another example is Siri. You can talk to your phone and say, set an alarm for 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, and it'll set the alarm, and then we can ask it questions, and it can answer simple questions like, what time are my alarms? So these systems are exciting, but they're also single purpose. They can only do a relatively narrow set of things that they were programmed to do. Now, the reason that people are so excited about ChatGPT is it, is it can do all sorts of cool things. For example, I say, I'm supposed to come up with a topic for my European history essay. I have to write about one of the Tudor monarchs. Who would be three interesting monarchs to write about? The system will tell me some information about the Tudor dynasty and then start describing the monarchs like Henry VII, Henry VIII, etc. It gives me all this interesting information that's going to be a great starting point for my research on this. I can also ask it something more creative. I'm working on a song about a breakup, and I need a word that rhymes with doubt, that thematically relates to sadness. Can you suggest a few words? The model will say, sure, here are some words. Shout, route, spout, out, scout, clout. Yeah, they all rhyme with doubt. That's great. It did that right. And it even gives a little explanation of each one as to why it thematically relates to sadness. So this kind of goes well outside the bounds of what sort of narrow capabilities the system was programmed for. So we're going to learn about how we got from these kind of single purpose systems like Google Translate to this broad general system of ChatGPT. We're going to talk about what the core technology behind ChatGPT is. And in order to do that, we're going to learn some basic principles of machine learning and natural language processing. Throughout these videos, I'm going to have some exercises that are things that you can try. And so just to start things off, I'd like you to open up ChatGPT and just try a few things and share the results with others. I want you to try asking it about a fact, having it help you brainstorm about something like we did with the song lyrics, and also try to have it solve a math problem. See how it does on each of these things, and are you happy with the results or not? That's the end of this segment.